That's right. Welcome home from the bottom of our hearts. My friends, this is our global phenomena, our Sunday gathering made world famous by you guys and gals. So we thank you for being here. I'm Sandra Champlain. I'm joined today by the beautiful Shirley Ann Sharp and the handsome Darren Wynn. We wish you a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. Each week we come together to let you know there's a bigger picture to life and there's a bigger picture to who you are. We join the two worlds, not that we need they need joining, but we give evidence of the afterlife during our medium demonstration. We inspire you, we hope to, with our words from the week, our words during the address, our reading, and of course we bring it all together in prayer it's special. It's very special to me. I hope it's special to you wherever in the world you are. Welcome. I'm going to turn it over to Shirley Ann for the opening prayer. But Shirley Ann, would you mind letting us know a little bit about the music? There's a theme involved and the theme, Shirley Ann was gracious enough to work with our friend and community, community member Jane to pick the songs today, but also the theme. So Shirley Ann, would you be so kind to explain more and then go into the opening prayer well good morning good evening good afternoon everyone i know we're from all over the globe which is just a miracle in itself but uh the music today my very good friend in new zealand in auckland she doesn't live very far from me jane bold and of course she's a long time community member and a long time student with carrie and phil um, helped me choose the music. So all the music is from New Zealand this morning. So hopefully uh, the bits and pieces of a foreign language in there and maybe a slight accent doesn't confuse or, or get anybody too wound up. But Footprints to you, it's all about your something, that self-care, coming back to you, coming home. The heart is where the home is, and of course, the heart is with you. So upon that, uh, Sandra, I will do the opening prayer. So if we could come together in that very silent, still oneness of ourselves and our beautiful friends in the spirit world and extend that beautiful saying, welcome home to our friends in the spirit world which we know to many here and within the spirit world will feel right now quite emotional. But welcome home, my friends. Welcome home, my family, from the spirit world. Let us join hands all over the world. Let us come together as we can do now. Let us come together in community and unity of spirit and heart. Allow that love that we have for each other, coming together in this day, this evening, this morning. Bind us. Allow this community to light up the spirit world, to light up our lives, to light up our community and flood the world with harmony and peace. As we come together to enjoy each other's company and the love from the spirit world, let us just sit back and enjoy that beautiful feeling, bathe in that love that is surrounding you right now, allowing us to be here right now. So my friends, as we go forward into this morning's gathering and as we hold each other's hand tight for support in all forms that all of us need, welcome. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for that introduction, Shirley and, and Sandra. And do you know what? It's nice to be part of a gathering where we have music we've never heard of before and song in a different language. I think it's always beautiful to listen to a song in a different language because you're not necessarily listening to the words, you're listening to the tones and the music itself, which makes it even more special, I think. So I'm going to take you into today's reading. I stared blankly at the stacks of paper that filled my elderly neighbour's living room that summer's day. What had I gotten myself into? I need you to beat my eyes, Ruth said. I'm looking for a notebook with a picture of this teapot. She pointed at a cabinet filled with beautiful porcelain teapots. It's here somewhere. I smiled nervously. Do you remember where you last saw it? Goodness no, she said, but you'll know it when you see it. This was what my life had come to, 
Even an 89-year-old woman with bad vision could see I had nothing better to do than hunt for a dusty old notebook. I'd moved back home when I was 28, feeling like a failure at work, at love, at everything. I was constantly tired and achy, depressed. Nothing interested me. I'd always enjoyed crafting, but now I never seemed to have the energy. I couldn't remember the last time I'd felt God in my life. Mum kept at me to get involved, to help others, but what could I offer? Tips on how to be a loser? So when Ruth Thornton called, asking if I could pop over for a minute, Mum had practically pushed me out the door. It'll do you good, she said. Now I searched through a sea of paperwork. Ruth had moved on to a different topic. How she'd gotten started collecting crosses. My head was spinning. I don't think I can find it, I said after an hour. That's all right, it'll turn up, she said. They always do. Her optimism baffled me. Maybe upstairs, I thought. There, wedged in a corner of a spare bedroom, I found it. Wonderful, Ruth exclaimed. I'll use that in the talk I'm giving next week. I looked at her in astonishment, almost 90, and her life was busier than mine. I found myself visiting Ruth several times a week. At first, I'll admit it was just to keep mum off my back. But there was always something that intrigued me. A book she suggested I borrow. A pretty pattern in a teacup. One of her crosses in her collection on the wall. One day I arrived to find Ruth sitting in her living room, squinting at a piece of stationery. I need your eyes again, she said. Can you read this letter to me? Sure, I said. I moved the chair next to hers. Dear Ruth, I began reading. I was thinking about the dig we went on. I looked at her in surprise. Were you an archaeologist? No, she smiled. She said, smiling at the memory. It was just a hobby, but we've stayed in touch. I finished reading the letter and Ruth said, thanks. Now I better write her back. I busied myself organising some of her books, but I kept glancing at Ruth, carefully writing. She was amazing, a puzzle. How had this woman living in a tiny Iowa town managed to live such a full life? She just never seemed to stop. Surely the letter writer didn't expect an immediate reply, but there was Ruth hard at work. Soon I realised that Ruth wasn't writing just on an occasional letter. Nearly every day there was a note for me to read and a letter for her to write. She had collected friends like she had teapots and had stories to go with each one, stories of travel and adventure, but also of raising her three children and selling clothes in her and her husband's store in Storm Lake. She had lived a life I could only dream of living. Summer faded into fall. More and more, Ruth needed me to be her eyes and even her hands. I noticed that she was falling behind in her cleaning and offered to do her dishes. Ruth asked me to do more tidying up and more odd jobs. Finally, she offered to hire me as a part-time housekeeper. I hesitated. A housekeeper? Then I thought, what else have I got going on? It's a deal, Ruth, I said. That winter, Ruth fell and shattered her hip. A son called. Would I spend evenings with Ruth in the nursing home while she recovered? They'd be willing to pay. I thought of Ruth lying there alone. How could I refuse? One cold winter night when I was run wondering for the millionth time where my life was going, I trudged down the hall to Ruth's room. She seemed so small, so helpless in her bed, and when she saw me, she managed a thin smile. I've been hoping you'd come, she said. A letter came today. Could you read it? I sat by her bed and quickly read the letter. Anything else, I asked. She looked at me hesitantly. Would you mind helping me write a letter back, she said. It was such a simple, obvious request, but for a moment it left me speechless. Ruth needed me. This woman who had lived such a full, rich life truly needed me. I had found my purpose. It had been in plain sight all along. Connecting with others, that's what we've kept going on about. And here she was, her body broken, still wanting to reach out. She needed me to help her touch her world. But more than that, I fully understood there was something I needed from her. Who should we write? I asked, collecting paper and pen. Her face lit up with excitement. When we finished, I looked over at Ruth. There was colour in her cheeks. I knew how she felt, like a new person. 
Ruth left the nursing home and my services were no longer needed, and yet I no longer thought of visiting Ruth as a job. Several times a week I found myself thinking of things I could do for her, baking some banana muffins or finding a poem. I knew she would like any excuse to drop by. But now Ruth was only part of my life. I had started making crafts again and reconnecting with friends. One day I found myself making Ruth a gift, stitching together a rainbow of yarns to create a large cross. With each stitch I felt my heartbeat quicken, my hand moving faster at a still familiar task I could not wait to show Ruth. She held it up admiringly, her eyes twinkling. Thank you, she said. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. This will get a treasured spot in my collection. She paused and then looked at me. So I look forward to your visits, she said. You make me feel young again. You have so much energy and life. I wish I had your energy. I looked at her in surprise. Was there someone else in the room? But as my eyes met hers, I realised that Ruth saw something I was only just now recognising. My aches, they seemed to have vanished. My spirit, it felt lighter than it had in years. I had learned that every day is an opportunity to learn, to meet someone, to try something new. And frankly, I couldn't wait to start the next lesson. So as we finish that, we go into our healing segment and we have a beautiful song sung by Maisie Rika, if I pronounce that correct. Um, and the song is sung in the Maori language and it is a beautiful song to sit and listen to. A beautiful song for us all to come together as one and blend as one. As we come together as one, we send out that healing power and create that healing balm to spread to all four corners of our world, to bring, to bring that ease, that pain, and ease that discomfort and that unhappiness that's going on through our world. But also for all those souls and individuals that are in need on this day from that healing balm and healing power. That's exactly what we're going to do now to try and help humanity as much as we can. So as you sit and listen to this song, feel free to close your eyes and send those positive thoughts and love and joy to all those that you know may be in need on this day. everyone again. So I am delivering the first part of the address and first of all I'd like to say thank you for allowing me the indulgence of bringing a little of my country to you. A little bit of things that I hold precious to my heart. But speaking about hearts, footprints to you, your something, what brings you home to you? What helps you focus on your life? What brings you back into balance? It's not an easy question when you ask yourself because you've really got to think about what makes me happy? What brings me joy? What brings me peace and calmness? And it may be spending time with children and grandchildren. Maybe reading. It may be going for a walk or spending time in nature. It might be any of these things, but as we know, it's got to be at least over 80% of all medical illnesses in the world are caused with stress and anxiety. So we kind of owe it to ourselves, and not only to ourselves, to our family and friends, our loved ones around us. You know, it's personal responsibility within our philosophy but it's also personal responsibility within you to try and stay balanced, to try and stay as even keeled. I hope you haven't been one of those people as I have at some point in my life looked in the mirror and thought, who am I looking at? I've taken that hat off with business and family and rushing around looking after pets and, and being a caregiver. Somewhere in there, is you, somewhere. But to find you can often be the hardest job that you will ever set yourself. So by putting a little bit of time aside, even five minutes, even 10 minutes as a daily practice, just to come back to center, come back to you, come back to heart. 
Do you know, I was reading an article and it was talking about the two major factors in our life, love and fear. I know which side of the fence I want to be on. But in order to be there, I have to know within myself I can offer what I need to. I need to be present for my loved ones and my family. We've all heard that saying, you can't pour anything from an empty cup to help another person. So here I'm really talking about filling your own cup, recharging, regenerating, making those wonderful feelings that you have inside be projected out once you've recognized them. By going to that little place every day, you become a calmer person. And let's face it, there's situations we all meet every day where I wish I had been a little bit calmer. I wish I had a thought about the words I spoke before they left my mouth. I wish I'd thought about my behavior before I showed anyone else. That time of being calm, which would have allowed me just time to reflect, reflect on how I truly felt about something, pushing away the anger, pushing away the anxiety, coming down to the core feeling of how I felt about that person's situation or whatever was going on, be it great, be it not so great. You know, often we do things in life and, and uh, boy, I'm not innocent of this one, that we thought, gosh, I wish I hadn't held my tongue. Gosh, I wish I had rethought that path. Most of the time, we can always go back and repair those bridges. But why have to go back and repair those bridges if we can try and get it right the first time? By thinking about how I would like to be treated. How I want to be treated is how I would like to treat others. And by being that calmer, more well-balanced person, it would certainly help. I could find that inner peace. I could find that inner rhythm and probably avoid many medical situations and hiccups that my poor old body might go through by being a calmer, more, let's say, strategic thinker. When something happens, whether it be right or wrong, good or bad, a friend of mine said, don't do anything, don't say anything for 24 hours. And what a good rule that is. It's a lovely thing to do, to be able to go into a situation prepared. Whereas my mum used to always say, fully armed is fully warned. And I bet we've all heard that. So taking that time out is almost essential it's not something that the doctor can prescribe. It's not something that your holistic um, doctor person can help you with. It's up to you. It's up to you to decide to take something for you. Refill your cup. Replenish. If you're a gardener, put fresh potting mix on those roots so you can release what you need to to others as well as yourself. At the end of the day, when all is said and done, think about what is actually there. And at the bottom of the cup, it's you. I think I take more care of my pets, my shoes, my nieces and nephews, my uncles and aunties than I do myself. Polishing my favorite bag and putting it in its dust cover and in its little shelf. Do I take that much care of myself? Not really. It's making an appointment with yourself. It's making that time to say, this is for me, to find me, as I want to show me. You know, it's not a big ask to say to yourself, here's some calmness. This is how you'll find it. It's not going to take you long. 
You don't have to go on those big jaunts for a whole weekend. You don't have to go on a six-week holiday. You don't have to go to the spa for a whole weekend. Five minutes, take a walk. As we say in New Zealand, in the bush. Go into the garden, smell the roses. Look at that lovely saying, stop and smell the roses. It couldn't be more important in this day and age. No one else is going to do it for you. This is something that is squarely in your court. If you want to offer the best to your family, your loved ones, your friends, your pets, you have to be at your best. You have to be in that moment. You have to be there fully and solely for what's in front of you. Not thinking about what's just gone, not thinking about what you've got to do when you're ahead. That's that person in the mirror. That's that person in the mirror that lost themselves so deep in that crevice that it's awfully hard to climb out. Let's not even go there. Let's take that time now and see if we can improve things for, for ourselves and then for each and every one of us. If you know someone is struggling, pass this on to them. Just say, sit with me for five minutes. Just sit with me in the stillness. Let's not talk. Let's not say one word. Let's hold each other's hand. It's not a big ask. And you know what? It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't interrupt your life at all. And it's offering help to somebody else, which makes you feel good. I just want to read some lyrics that I, I found in a song uh, that really meant something to me. Fill my house up with hope. Fill my plans with purpose. Fill my wounds with healing. Fill my days with meaning. Fill my future with vision. All of those things can be found by coming back to you. Finding the trueness, the trueness of your soul and who you want to be and present. It's all over to you, my friends. God bless. Thank you so much, Shirley Ann. And it's been cute on the chat box. There's just some questions coming up. What are the pits? She said pets, P-E-T-S. It's great because we have a global gathering. We have people from all over the world. And while I don't think I have an accent, I surely do as an American, because when we think of our friends in the UK, in the original King's English, <laughs> it's a little different than how I speak. So it's pets that we take care of our pets and others so often better than we take care of ourselves. And Shirley Ann, thank you for bringing up that anxiety and fear. Something we don't really talk about too often, but I think it's something that runs through the veins of many of us. I think it's just part of being human. You know, anytime I've mentioned that I had a fear of this or that, oh, what comes back to me is you don't need to be afraid. Well, thanks, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't help. I think it's just natural. It's natural and normal. If you follow my podcasts, you'll know that recently I love sharing near death experiences that people have. And one of the most comforting things I find is when people are just approaching the end of their life, these deathbed visitors that come and they appear just as real as you and I to the people. So no one dies alone. And in preparations for uh, an upcoming podcast that you'll hear in a couple of weeks, there was several beautiful stories about medical professionals that they themselves witnessed their parents and just before they passed people that they saw, whether it was someone who spoke a different language or um, pets that came through or loved ones. I remember one so vividly about this woman that you know experienced fear in her life and her dad had a lot of fear as well and the mom was had cancer and was just getting ready to pass herself and this woman thought you know how am i going to go on it's just going to be dad and myself there's nobody else in our bloodline you know with a lot of fear there and just before the mother passed the uh, loved one came through, I think it might have been her own mom, and said, there's nothing to fear. You're always surrounded with love. 
You know, if we could only see the love that's around us at any time. And the same thing holds true with people who've had near death experiences. They say there's nothing to fear that we are encompassed and surrounded with so much love and guidance. If we could only see the love around us, it would change how we live life. So sometimes we have to act as if. And I was in my room the other day and I, I do my best thinking and podcasts and all that. Usually I'm cozy underneath my covers <laughs> and I've got the window there watching the birds landing on the branches. But I just imagined um, a guide a being there, someone who's been a nameless and voiceless, but who's just loved me unconditionally ever since the day I was born and maybe before that. And I want you to imagine for yourself too, that being, that person, whether you want to picture an angel or, or just someone wise who just has that look for you in their eyes like you would have for a brand new baby you know they have all that wonder and the world is open to them and that guide is just looking at that perfect little soul there's not one of us that would look at a baby and think oh they've got too much baggage they should do this this way or that way no they're just brand new the love is there so although we may not be brand new babies, consider that you are perfect and complete and whole just as you are. And consider that there's one, and I'm sure more, of these beings and loved ones that are looking at you with that love that you would have for that baby. You know, you're given this chance to walk and explore human life. And it's rare. Not everybody, I think, gets to do it. And some people are here for just a short time. But there's something here for each one of us. There's something good. There's an exploration. Yeah, I think when we sign up to come here, there's this anxiety and fear that presents itself. But if we can imagine that we're never alone, that we do have those with us that love us, and certainly now, I'm literally one episode away from 650 episodes that I've recorded between my two podcasts. So there's going to be nobody who can convince me that uh, that we don't um, survive physical death. So don't even try. You know, we do. But that we live that the loved one is there. Loved ones are there with us. So when Shirley Ann talked about footprints to you. I thought about footprints to me. You know, that's what we tend to do, what we share about is sometimes our journey and what we need to learn the most. And I spent most of my life looking for that purpose, thinking it's somewhere outside of myself. And where did all that fear and anxiety start? I think it starts when we're young. I think when we are those babies and we grow up into those toddlers and stuff happens. And I think that's the birth of the ego, right? When we realize people are different from us or maybe we should be a different way. And, you know, for me, my earliest memories, I got lost at Disneyland. Yes, lost. I have two sisters, a brother and a sister. And uh, got, I was gone for a little while. And um, I, as a kid, even though I'm a 58 year old adult now, I can still bring up that feeling of fear. I think that's the first time something happened. And then of course I grew older and I had bad vision, which nobody knew. My parents didn't know it. And I got glasses, I think, at the age of eight or nine. But I, I was called names. I couldn't see very well. So people thought I was a little stupid, right? And little did I know once that first pair of glasses came on my eyes, the whole world opened up to me. And then I remember being 16, my very first boyfriend. Oh, I loved him. You know, that love that people say is puppy love, but you know, that's real love. Well, after a year of dating me, he just conveniently started dating my best friend. So I lost the two of them. And I think as we grow up, we start building up the story about ourselves. And for me, it was not good enough, not pretty enough, not wanted. Right. So I started that journey thinking that the answer to all my problems was outside of myself. So I tried to be somebody else, you know, somebody different than who I really was, you know, and self love didn't exist. I don't think till I don't know, the past 10 years, past 20 years, I'm not really sure. 
And even at that, I don't have that handled. But when I realize, speaking of what Shirley Ann said in that time for ourselves and what brings me joy, that answer of who I am and what is my purpose? When am I going to find it, right? <laughs> We're always looking. We, we never find it when we look. We find it when we slow down. There's things about me and jobs that I've had that range from uh, renting out airplanes when I was a kid. I worked at an airport helping renting out airplanes. I worked at hospitals and nursing homes, being a dietary aide and then cooking for the, the folks that live there. I'm a chef by trade, went to culinary school. I owned a coffee and chocolate store. I thought I was going to own a restaurant someday. And then my mom and I, of course, for over 30 years, cooked for race car teams and had this big hospitality tent. But I never felt content. I never, like, there was always something else. And then after I wrote my book, We Don't Die, I thought, okay, that's it. That's it. Somehow I'm going to make this transition from cooking to being able to share what I love. And that's the reality of the afterlife. And of course, I didn't realize it, but in 2020, that happened. Um, it wasn't easy, but it, it happened. But did I find myself then? I would have to say no, because it's not about the job we have. It's about who we're being. And it seems like the last few years, I've found myself, right? And I know my purpose, I do. And it's a little of this, and it's a little of that. And if I were to ask you what your purpose is, I want you to look on the way, on the avenue of, of your values and your joys and what's important to you. In fact, if I were to ask you to ask the people that love you, what are your best attributes? That's the way you're gonna find the answer. Sometimes that little voice inside of our head, oh, it's so critical, like Shirley Ann said, so critical. But the people in your life know who you are. They know your generosity, your love, maybe your crazy, silly sense of humor, uh, that you love to volunteer or you love to be generous, you love to make a difference. Whatever that is, you love to create, you love to explore, you like to learn things new and you like to share with other people that's footsteps to you. That's who you are. So if I look back, whether I was cooking for somebody or renting out airplanes or making chocolates or being here on the Sunday gathering with you or doing the podcasts, I get to explore, I get to learn. And most importantly, I get to share. My life would be nothing if I didn't get to play and I didn't get to share. And being here on Sundays, and you, you can tell from Shirley Ann and, and Darren and others while, when they're here, there's got to be an element of play. It really does. Keep it light and keep it joyful, but be inspiring. So I think I just want to finish off for my part of the address, requesting that we're not so hard on ourselves. And it's not out there. It doesn't matter if you do one more thing in life or try one more job. It's who you're being. It's finding you in those tiny moments, in those milliseconds. You know, for me, nothing brings me more delight than these two wild turkeys that, that seem to just keep passing by the window. You know, they're, they're not afraid of me. I go outside and they give me that look. You know, it's probably the look, can you throw a few peanuts on the ground? But the teeniest, tiniest of birds and looking at the giant trees that I think are here and they've been here long before I've been here and they'll be here long after and putting things kind of in perspective, right? And that trust and imagine, really imagine that your loved ones are around you because they are, they continue to learn and grow in the unseen world, but they keep one foot in our world, they really do. And I don't doubt that we each have guides and inspirers that hang out with us for different times in our life. Maybe there's different ones that come in with different specialties. But think now of that one that's been standing with you since before you were born, loving you unconditionally, just as you love a baby. 
if they're perfect, whole, and complete. That's who you are. And if you've made some mistakes in life, so what? Forgive yourself, move on. And when you look at your fellow travelers in life, you know, we're different. We look different. We're from different parts of the world, of course. We believe different things politically and with religions and all, even our music, we like different choices. But it doesn't matter. They are divine souls walking this earth. They're finding themselves. They're gaining wisdom. They're growing. They're learning. And they're sharing. We don't have a one-size-fits-all world, and that's a really good thing. So all I want to say is be yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Find joy where you can. And those footsteps to you, they're right here. You've found yourself. So thank you for listening to our address. Thank you for the wonderful reading, Darren, and thank you for your wonderful words, Shirley Ann. We're going to switch gears now to our demonstration of mediumship. And this is an opportunity for our friends in the Sunday gathering that are in the unseen world to introduce themselves to you. While we're here together, we usually have, oh, three or four, um, sometimes more, but usually three or four friends from the spirit world that let us all know that they have survived physical death, that they are still by our sides, and often there are messages. There will be some people in our community that will get to interact with Shirley Ann, who is our medium today, but, just as you hopefully were on the edge of your seat with my words and Shirley Ann's words and Darren's reading, those in the spirit world you'll find say things and we can all take them on for our life. They are just as much part of this Sunday gathering, letting us all know that our loved ones have survived. So if you're not a person that gets a reading, please know that they are representing all of our loved ones who now no doubt are just all standing behind you right now, all looking at the computer or iPad or your phone, watching what's going on. And they're definitely part of it. So as we go into our demonstration, Shirley Ann is a longtime medium. She will invite those loved ones from the spirit world to make themselves known to her. And they do in their own different ways because we're still people, even though we have not got physical bodies and they'll share some things. And so you'll hear a few initial bits of information about the person that has uh, contacted her to introduce to you today. So she might mention if it's a man or a woman or what they did for work or some characteristics. We do want you to be on the edge of your seat listening because those in the spirit world know that you're here. Even if you think nobody knows, well, they know you're here. So you might get the reading today. So if you can understand the description of what Shirley Ann says about the person that stepped forward, we want you to press your raise hand button. And this is a good opportunity for everyone, whether you've been here or not, to just work that finger of yours and press that raise hand button for me. It's always fun. It's a little audience participation. And if you press it again, it goes from raise hand to lower hand. And why this is important is sometimes with those initial bits of information that Shirley Ann shares, there's more than one person that can understand the information. So she or whichever medium is with us, that will continue working to get it so that there's one person left with their hand raised. If we find if you find that is you, I have got a special button on my side, you're going to get a pop up on your screen that says host would like you to unmute. And it's at that point, you will see the button. You can't see it just now, but you will see it then if you work with Shirley Ann. We love to hear your voice. Your camera will be off, but we love to hear your voice. And when I say hear your voice, all we need from you is one of three responses. So she's going to work to give evidence that this is indeed your person. Could be a friend, could be a loved one, could be somebody a little distant, but she'll give you that those words. And all we need from you is a yes, no, or I don't know. It's as simple as that. Do me a favor and do everybody a favor is don't volunteer any more information than yes, no, or I don't know. We want everybody to leave our Sunday gathering or any medium demonstration you go to knowing that it is the medium who's bringing through your loved one that you didn't volunteer that information. 
all right? And play, pay special attention to those messages that do come through. Because I tell you, 99% of the time, I say, oh, I could use a little bit of that myself. Yes, I could. And they're beautiful. It's really a, a wonderful time. So I think that's all I have to do say about the instructions about how this goes. We always like to play a feel good piece of music before our demonstration. And to me, this is a time to really, really imagine, rejoice that our loved ones are with us. So you can just picture them by your side and, you know, and continue with that guide. Let's call them a guide, that person that was with you before you were born that loves you with those unconditional eyes that are really supporting your journey here as a human being. So picture them all together. Let's hear the song and then we will be back with Shirley Ann. So let me find it for you. Here we go. Another thank great song. Thank you to you and thank you to Jane who's here too. Beautiful songs, ladies. <laughs> I have to do a big shout out to Jane. She was really so helpful uh, putting that music together. So thank you, Sandra. Okay, so I guess we're at that part of our meeting where we go into our mediumship uh, delivery. And I feel as I have a gentleman here in the spirit world, and I truly feel this is Dad. And I know that Dad, um, I feel as though he did live to a ripe old age. So I want to go over 70, maybe even over 80 years old. And I know Dad kept going he would not stop with his daily chores and all the rest of it you literally had to stop him and say dad it's time to slow down right into his later years until really medically um dad needed a bit of intervention because he wasn't going to slow down it didn't really matter what anyone said can we put that out there, Sandra, please? Sure. All right, friends. Who understands this information about dad who's now living in the spirit world? <clears throat> Excuse me. Shirley Ann, we have several members of our community here that can understand all that information. Okay. And you would know that um, I, I do feel as though you were part of dad's care in his later years. And I do feel as though, well, not later years, actually. I feel as though once he slowed down, um, he passed not, the, I would say, within a year of, of slowing down. And you were part of his help and caregiving. Um I feel as though that dad would have spent time in a care facility as well during that year prior to his passing. Thank you, Shirley Ann. All right, friends, if you cannot understand 100% of that information, please press your lower hand button. We do have eight to 10 people with their hands raised. So okay. it's important to find that one person. So I'm gonna trust you that all with your hands raised, you can take all that information. So we have five ladies with their hands raised. And I do feel with dad that mum would have passed first. And you would understand with dad, he, he never got over that. It's uh, uh, My heart's broken and it's never going to mend until I'm with her again. Thank you very much. All right. We have two ladies left with their hands right. raised, Aaron and... and I'm Both a... these ladies would understand that they were, I'm going to say, very active in dad's care before he passed. Okay. Not just the odd visit, we're very active with dad. Okay, All right. thank you. We still have no, the two hands up. And you would also understand too that dad had trouble with his feet. Um, I feel you, you would understand a lot of pain with his feet. Not his legs so much, it was his feet. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Ima and Laura had their hands up. Erin, I know you just put up your hand, but you will have to take 100% of that information for that to fit. Now, when I say that dad uh, had to be stopped, basically, uh, towards the end, of, because he, he would just go and go and go, I feel this gentleman worked really hard right up to the end. It wasn't just light work. This was, he, he, he worked really hard, and he would still take on jobs that he would have done when he was 30 years old. He, it's like he never um, understood the whole process of aging. Thank you very much. Well... 
Okay, we still have several hands. We have two hands up. Laura has been with us since the beginning. Cheryl just recently put her hand up. So, Laura and okay. yeah, and, and then Cheryl, you just stay just where you are. So we sort this out. Hey, Laura, how are you? Hi, Shirley Ann, I'm good. Um, now, if, if this is your dad, um, which I'm sort of feeling it is, but uh, you would understand you were very close. Yes. Um, and there was you you had a different type of communication with dad than you did with mum yes um, and I feel with dad and yourself you had very similar interests yes and you'd understand that um, dad was because I feel quite a calm person with dad he wouldn't mm. well I wouldn't it's, it's not that he wouldn't let things rattle him um he had more self-control than a lot of people. Yes. Um, and and he was really, truly, a, well, I feel he was a gentleman. You would understand that. Yes. Um, and L Laura, am I correct in saying that you actually have another sister? Yes. Um, because I feel the relationship between dad and your other sister was different to the relationship that he had with you. Yes. And you'd also understand that um, you have similar physical uh, traits to him, looks. <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, so the jury's out on that one. But your <laughs> similarities were so strong. It was, you know, where you saw Dad, you would see you as a kid. Where, where you saw you as a kid, you'd see Dad not far behind. Yes. Um, and I also feel he's bringing to mind here, Laura, when you started dating, oh, my goodness, he was, he, he would stay in the background, but, oh, my goodness, so protective. He, it was this quiet kind of focus on my daughter. Can you understand that? Yes. He, yeah. and, and, and you know it was always born out of love and he always wanted the best for you. But I know with his care to the end, um, it wasn't an easy thing for you in, in your rearranging your life and different things in your life to, in, in order to look after dad, but it's almost like you dropped everything yeah. to take care of this beautiful soul in your life. And I know when he passed, it left a massive hole in your world. Yes. You would understand that. Um but you would also understand when you would, because because I feel like almost every time you'd leave the house or or you'd go away for a particular amount of time, he'd blow you a kiss. Can you remember no. him doing? Okay, because I just feel maybe he's doing that now. Then because I'm I'm feeling yeah. him blowing a kiss. Okay, now I want to go back to your childhood because Dad was the one that got your first bike together and taught you how to ride. Yes. Because I, I, I feel I'm holding your handlebars and you were, so, <laughs> you were so frightened, you were actually giggling. You tended to giggle when you were uh, uh, anxious or stressed out. Can you understand that with Dad? Yes. Yeah. Um, now, I also feel, too, you and Dad kind of shared secrets that you wouldn't share with Mum. Yes. Because I always feel feel Dad saying, well, you know what's under the Christmas tree for you this year, don't you? You know what she's got you this year. <laughs> I can almost feel him saying that to you. So you were sort of pre-warned, pre but you always had to act surprised. Can you remember that type of thing going on? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I also feel, too, um, there's, I feel like there's a memory here of Dad actually taking you clothes shopping, like women's clothes shopping. Yes. Um, and he would take you. He would be as involved as he could, but he knew when to stand back. I mean, what a lovely <laughs> man taking you clothes shopping. But <laughs> and I feel like this is when you were older. Yes. All righty. Um, and I know Dad always had the wallet open if need be. <laughs> 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 um, and I also feel too when he did that, Mum was not always told. Much yes. of that was on on the side. Don't tell Mum. I've, I've got this for you. 
Well, this gentleman's coming with with so much love, Lara. He's. He, mm. I, I feel like he just. I feel like you'd be aware that he looked at you as the most beautiful little thing, and there's there's a belief with him, like he just can't believe he had anything to do with bringing you into this world. It, mm. it was with him. It's just a. Oh, I just feel an overwhelming pleasure just speaking to you. So Dad comes through with much love, but also um, I do feel as though towards the end of his life when you were looking after him, you gave him a lot of peace. I feel with you there, he knew he was going to be okay because I actually feel you'd had conversations along those lines as well. Yes. Because I feel as though he was nervous about what he was going through and he expressed this to you. Yes. Um, and you would also know that you both spoke about him. He was he was tired, Laura. You would understand. He, yes. he was being poked and prodded and all yes. those. Yeah. Um, and he he's making me aware that he was aware that your only wish was he was at peace. Yeah. yeah. Um, because yeah. There's a feeling here that some of some of your thoughts towards the end, um, you know, you wanted him to go so he would be in harmony. He would be at peace. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you. And, and I also feel mm -hmm. you were aware when he started to see people coming. Yes. <laughs> because I know you were just... Oh my goodness! It it sort of it was a light bulb moment for you almost. Yes, and I also know that you're aware uh, that because I feel like Dad made quite a huge effort to come and let you know he was okay. Yes, after he passed. Yes. Um, Lara, I want you to know you're still his his little star, his little pearl. Um, <laughs> Very precious skill to him. Mm, thank you. So I will leave you with much, much love from your dad, and he just fills my heart. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Sharia. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, lovely. Thank you, Sandra, for, for helping out with all of that. Anytime. Thank you. Um, now, as I move my mind uh, once again to the spirit world, I feel like I have a, um, I'm going to, I'll use the word young man at this point. Um, and I actually feel there's somebody in our audience would recognize this young man as being a very close family member. Uh, you would know, you would know he got tro in trouble with the law. Um, and you would know he was in trouble with the law and you would know that one of the last times that you saw him, he was actually being taken away by the law. Can we put that out there, Sandra? Yes, thank you very much. All right, friends, who can understand this information? Press your raise hand button, please. No hands up going going up straight away. Oh, oh, I say that and then a hand pops up. We have Janine with her hand raised. Janine, if you could press your unmute button. Hi, Janine. Hi there. Welcome. Hi, Thank Janine. You. This this was um a very close family member of yours. Yes. Um, and, and I feel like this young one, he, you know, he really made some bad choices. Yes. Um, and and I feel as though um, some of them he was misled into. You'd be aware of that. Yes. Um, Janine, would this be your son? Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, and you know, I, I know, I know that this is this is heartbreaking, but. I want to try and bring back some some lovely memories with him. You knew he enjoyed music. Yeah. Because I feel like you and him would sit together and he would actually put his head on your shoulder or you onto his when you were listening to some music. Yes. Um, and those those are quite special times for you. I know that you have photographs around the house also of him. Um, and, and I feel 
I feel his passing was was unfortunate. Indeed. And I, I feel as though there's still wheels in motion trying to sort this out. Yes. And that's caused a heck of a lot of anxiety within the family. And this young man's making me aware it's almost ripped the family apart. Mm, not so much. Okay. Well, well, that's a good thing that it hasn't. I'm very pleased that it hasn't done that. Um, so that that's very good. Um, I will come back to that awareness. Um, but you would understand that this this young man, he he knew he was in the wrong. He knew he did the wrong thing. Um, I I can't say. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I know there's a lot of questions around this, and I know the truth has not come out yet. Yes. And you would also understand that there are people around, um, and I, I do feel as though that you are aware of this, I feel as though he's giving me this impression that people haven't told the full story. Uh, I think so, yes. Um. All right, because I, I, I actually feel that there are other people around that 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 there's consequences for them if they bring out the full story, can I say? Yes. Okay, thank you. It, it's awfully hard to put this in the right way in a public setting, as, as you can imagine. Um, now, I do feel as though this young man... Um, you would know from a very young age he was a live wire. He was a real spark. Yes. Um, and I know with this one, if you said do it with A, he would turn it upside down and he would do it with B. <laughs> yes. But it was all out of like, I want to find out if I did it this way, what had happened. You know, it wasn't sort of malice or anything. He, he was just curious. Yep. Um, and I also know he was high energy because I want to start jumping around. So I'm, I'm, he, he was a high energy lad. Yes. Um, and I know at school, <laughs> at school you would understand that, yes, there was problems. He got into situations at school as well. Mm. Not so much. Because I feel Nuts. this high energy at school. I want to get on with things. I want to do things. I want to find out about things. Uh, super, super intelligent, which sometimes cause problems. So okay, that 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 would have been that would have been what I'm picking up. Um, because I feel as though at school, uh, it, your young man, he was. I feel I'm quite misunderstood. I, people don't understand me. Uh, I can't really take that. Okay, all righty. Then if it's not being understood, then you would then you would understand sometimes he had problems um, actually putting into words how he felt. Yes. Okay, that would that would be that feeling there. All righty. But I do feel um, Oh, gosh, you would understand there was a lot of what what happened with your son didn't need to happen, shall I say? Yes. There were other ways of coping with things. There are other ways of handling things. And I feel like you're in this battle for him at the moment. Yes. You have been. Um, I feel like it's perhaps less now than what it was. Yes. I just want you to know that I feel as though your son, because although we've talked about his high intelligence and his energy, he could actually be really laid back as well. Yep. Um, and... Um, mm. I also want to say, Janine, you'd be aware uh, that he did get muddled up in, 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 in the wrong crowd. Yes. Yeah. 
there were certain ones there that, because I even feel as though you'd warned him about certain ones. Yes, generally. Yeah, okay. Um, I just want to let you know he's sending a lot of, well, of course he's sending a lot of love, but I feel like he's, He's very aware at night, particularly, you You know, it's a harder time for you. Yes. I want you to be aware that he's very much around you. He very much feels how you feel. Um, because I feel like this young man, he was really close to you. It, it was like um, you, you had a real emotional bond. Yes. It's almost like in those quiet moments when you two were just together without the hustle and bustle of the rest of the family. Very close. And I, I feel like he trusted you. He could tell you things and he trusted that if need be, they wouldn't go anywhere else. Yes. It's a, it's a strong fear. I always had mum's trust. I always had mum's trust. Um. You know, this young lad's giving me the impression here. He, he was so grateful to have been your son. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though you fought for opportunities uh, for him when others in the family were not quite on board as much as you were. Yes. Yeah. So I want to say, Mum, You've got all my love. You've got all my kisses. I, I want to grab your face and just kiss it all over the place. You'd understand he'd skylark around like that. Yes. Yeah, because he was a real jokester. He had a good sense of humour. Um, yes, even from a young lad, he had a good sense of humour because I feel like as a child he'd also play tricks on you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I know as a young lad he would follow you around rather than follow Dad around. Yes. He was always at your heels. Um, and I also know as a kid, he was like, Mom, what about this? Mom, what about that? But questions, questions, questions. Talk, 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 talk. Yep. There are times that you just hear you here and wish to, and wanted to say, please be quiet. But but I feel like you didn't. You just persevered with this young man. Also, too, he's bringing back memories of you two in the kitchen actually cooking together. Yep. Um, and fun memories because I, I, yeah, I feel like the kitchen didn't look the same when he was in it after he'd finished. <laughs> there was quite a bit of cleaning up to do after he'd finished. But I want to leave you with lots of love and lots of happy memories of your son. I know that you've still got a lot of his things in the house. Um, and you would understand that certain friends have said, you know, it's time to put them in boxes, et cetera, et cetera. But you've gone, no, you would understand that. Yes. Yeah. You do what you need to. You you don't have to listen to other people when it comes to things like this. You do what you need. You do what makes you feel good, and you will do things in your own time. And I feel this was very much like your son. I feel like your son could be very, very independent and very strong-minded, and I actually feel to the point of even being stubborn at times. Yes, that's for sure. Yeah, so I, I just want to give you his love and his strength. And, you know, you just stick up for yourself. If people, if you don't want people around, just say, go home. I had enough. What, whatever you need to get you through those times, because he's, he's letting me know there's a lot of those times with you. A lot of times you're struggling with his memory. He's just, it feels like it's constantly with you. Well, thank you, Shirley Ann. Okay. So take care, Janine. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Shirley Ann. Thank you. Sandra, as I um, move my awareness back again, I feel as I have another dad here. I feel as though dad did pass with a heart attack. I feel like he had the heart attack and he never recovered, sadly. Um, so can we pop that out there, please? We can. All right, friends, if you can understand that, dad with a heart attack, that's how he passed and never recovered. All right, we have several members of our community that can take that. Sorry to say, I know it's tough. Oh, 
all right. So I do know this gentleman. He was quite a big man, uh, uh, um, body wise. I know, he, he, you know, he was he was strong. He was a big man. Okay, so we still have quite a few. I know this is a very physical man. Um, I do know coming up to uh, problems with his heart, I feel like I started to put on a little bit of weight. I wasn't looking after myself as well as I should have been. I also feel that this gentleman, he was working, I feel like I'm working long hours um, up to this point. Okay, so we still have We four. still have five, five We're ladies five. with their hands raised. That um, uh, trusting can take all the information. Now, I feel when this happened to Dad, I feel like he was in a very public place. All right. Thank yeah. you all. We have, yeah. We're down to um, two. Phyllis and, and Josephine. You would be aware that the emergency was called because I feel as though there was emergency people there and I feel as though there was a family member there as well. I feel there was a female family member with them as well. Does that make sense to both Phyllis and Josephine? Public area, we have our accident emergency there and one, actually, I'm, I'm going to uh, be a little daring and say the, the person that was with him is our one of our ladies with our hands up. Okay. Josephine, thank, thank you, you Josephine. all for being part of this. It's always important to get to the right person. Josephine, you. if you would press your unmute button. Hi, Josephine. Hello, Josephine. Try that one more time, Josephine. Press that unmute button. You did quickly and then it got locked again. Hi, Josephine. Hi, actually, I'm not Josephine. I'm sitting with Josephine. Oh, who are we? Who is, what's your name? My name's Janet. And Janet. I and watch your show with her every Sunday. Oh, that's oh right. Janet. Well, it's it's so lovely to talk to you. You would understand the information that I've given. Yes, uh, okay. I was with my father when he passed away. Now you would also understand that you and your father are quite similar. If there was a problem or a stressful situation, you'd move into that autopilot. You would forget about yourself and deal with what is in front of you. Yes. Um, and I know this theory with dad is I'll fall apart after. Let's just get through what we have to right now. Um, and I feel when when dad, when this happened to dad, you didn't panic, you knew what to do, and you moved into overdrive. Yeah. Um, I also feel in this situation too, um, okay, I feel as though... Uh, you were also the one that broke the news to mum. Um, I, I can't take that. I don't remember. Okay. All righty. Because I, I just feel that impression with dad. But you would understand that um, dad's giving me the impression here that even you had said something to him about slowing down. Starting to look after yourself a little bit more because you would know that this wasn't the first tweak that would that had happened with the with this condition. Yes. Okay. Um, but I do feel Dad was quite a stubborn individual in going and getting anything done about it. You would understand that. Um not not too sure about that. Okay, because, uh, oh, okay, that might be a little bit of perception there. Um, and now, you would understand that, Dad, because I feel like Dad had a really good sense of humour. You would understand that? <laughs> it was fairly dry. It was a lot better than just Dad humour, I have to say. Yes. Um, you would understand that he used to crack the whole family up. And I feel like even Mum sometimes... I feel as though mum would just crack up as well. Mm, mm, I don't think so. Okay, if that's not the case then, um, Janet, would you understand there's somebody in your family with um, false teeth? Yes. Okay, because I feel like at, at one funny occasion um, when dad was, dad said something, these, these false teeth come flying out. Would you understand that? No, it wasn't my father that had the false teeth. It was my mom. 
It, 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 yeah, true. I'm not saying your dad had false teeth, but I feel like there was an incident with these false teeth coming out that dad was making me aware of. Mm -hmm. I can't take that. Okay, all righty. Um, because I just feel like I'm laughing so hard, my teeth coming up. All righty. Um, now you'd know that like dad, dad was a hard worker, and I feel like dad, he was really good to everybody. I feel like he would help anybody out. Yes. If he could, because I feel like he'd be the guy that would stop and help you change your tire if your tire was down. Yep. I now I know I know that dad also too, with you growing up, well, with all the kids growing up, he was very, very concerned about their uh safety and well being around where I'm not sure whether it's where you lived or where you kids went, but he was he was always concerned about your safety. Yeah. That was a big thing with dad. Um, and I also feel like uh, he was the first one to hold up his hand. He would drive you. He would pick you up. Yes. And then he got me to drive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and upon saying that, I almost feel like he's laughing. I feel like he was tearing his hair out. It was a nerve-wracking experience for him. You would understand that. Because I feel like you were very heavy on the accelerator. Yes. Okay. Um, and I also feel with dad, um, you know, he was always first with you to help you. He was always first, the first one there if you needed help. Yes. Um, you would also understand that dad would have helped redecorate. It's, it's either a flat or a house that you were in. No. Okay, then you would understand he did that at home. No, I don't, not, not, not understand. Okay, all righty. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to Dad. Now, you would also understand too, like I feel apart from Dad's heart condition, I feel like there were a few stomach issues as well. No. Ooh, I'm feeling cramps in there. Okay. All right. Now that's all right. That's okay. Now, um, also too, Janice, you'd understand that when Dad passed, the sorting out of the estate for your mum uh, wasn't an easy feat. No. You do. You don't understand that. No. 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 Yeah. Because I feel like there were things that weren't wound up. There were some loose ends that were left. Like with work and business and money. No. It's certainly sorted out now. Would you understand? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Give her just one moment. Something's going on behind the scenes, I think. Drop her microphone. That's okay. It was just my little dog right. going off. But you would understand that Dad did most of the financial things at home. No. Mm, I okay. All righty. So that was more mum. Um, then Janet, you would, you know in your life you're the one that controls most of the financial things. No. Okay. All righty. Okay. Can I just throw this information out there again, Sandra? Have we got time? Oh, yeah. sure, we do. Um, can hide Janet, the dog. Just stand there for a moment. Is there someone in our community that also understands all this information? No. I, Josephine, do you understand anything? I'm not paying attention. No. She's not paying attention. Let's just <laughs> check. Let's just check if there's anyone else in our community here, just in case. Yeah. Press the raise hand button if there's anyone else that understands this information about dad. Uh, we've gotten a couple people to say, re could you repeat it? And Jane has her hand raised. 
Okay, so I'll just go through that initial piece of information again. I feel as though Dad would have had a heart attack in a public place. He would not have recovered from that heart attack. Um, I feel as though uh, you or another female member of the family, maybe mum, would have been present, but one of you were present with accident and emergency. Um, can we just throw that out? Jane Bowl? Hello, Jane. No, it's not. Okay, Lore. Lore had her hand up before. Lore, if you could press your unmute button. So, Janet, just stay listening. Lore, you would understand that you would have been with Dad when he passed. Uh, no, it was my sister. It was your sister. Then you would understand that, that your sister called you and let you know almost immediately. Yeah, I walked in right after, but it wasn't in a public, yeah. Okay. Um, Law, you would also understand that this isn't the first tingling that Dad had with his heart. We're not sure. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that not sure because I feel as though this was quite a stubborn man that that wouldn't have gone to the doctors as much as he should have. Right. Um, you'd understand that Dad was a hard worker with a sense of humour. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, and you'd also understand that when he passed, the financial things weren't tied up as well as they could have been. Um, there wasn't much finance, so, yeah. But, but there were things outstanding. Uh, there were things that need to be needed to be seen to. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, now, I also feel as though um, you would understand, though, um, with Dad, he was very protective over you. Very protective over all the kids, actually, with safety when you went out. I don't know. So I, I do feel quite a strong sense of that there. All righty. Um, okay. I want to get to the right, the mm. right person. You would understand that Dad was a big man. Yes. Okay. Now, would you? I also feel he's giving the the impression. Um, you're saying that you came in later, but the person that was with him was handling things, but you knew they were in shock. Yes. Okay. I do feel as though I'm here, Sandra. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, and, and I feel with Dad, he wouldn't have wanted to make a fuss. True. Um, because I feel that with everything in his life, he wouldn't have wanted to make a fuss. Um, just, now, uh, Dad wasn't a big speaker either. He didn't talk a lot. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm finding it hard to get words out of him. Um, and I also feel as though um, you knew he loved you through actions rather than words. Yes. Okay. And I also feel as though you'd understand that um, because I feel like Dad did give financial, as much financial help as he could to his kids. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually... Would you understand that he he lived with either you or your sister for a wee while? Could you repeat that? Would you understand that he stayed with you or your sister for a wee while? No. All righty. While he was alive? Yes, yes. Oh, no. Okay. Um, now, you would also understand... I, I feel as though that there is a brother around, Lara. That you've got a brother. Mm, no. Alrighty. Maybe it's not me. <laughs> no, no, I think it is you. You would understand a young man around you. Around me now? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Um. Alrighty, because he's giving me the impression of a young man. I thought it was a son, but obvious, obviously it's not. It's your son. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel as though he's giving me the impression here that um, he can get himself into a little bit of trouble occasionally as well. 
Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not him. Okay. All right. Well, I won't go any further into that one. He's just giving me the impression then of a young man around you and it will be his grandson. <laughs> so you would understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel it... it your grandson is actually very, very, his grandson, he's giving me the impression, is very, very clever. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling that with him because I'm feeling like he's doing rather well at school. Mm hmm Okay. Um, now, just going back to your dad, too, um, I don't feel as though he was a man that had a lot of education. Right. Um, and he really wanted to push you girls into your education. I think so. Yeah, he had fingers crossed that you'd all do well, um, which which of course is most parents, but he, he had a real thing about it because um, he didn't feel as though he had education, so he never felt quite up to par in certain things against other people. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do know, because Dad's giving me the impression too that you, you're sort of... Um, you know, you you're a little bit of a head of the uh, the head of the family. You you kind of hold people together. Yes. Yeah. Um. And I and I feel this absolute love for doing this, um, because I do feel there was a point where the family could have fallen apart. Sometimes. And you tried to keep everybody together with a that little bit of glue, just that family glue. I feel a great love for that, uh, because I feel as though. Um, you know, you've just held people together. You've been there because I feel like you've been there for situations with your sister. He's making me aware of that um, because he wasn't able to be. Yes. Um, and and of course, that's, that's helped her a lot. I want to leave you with his love um, and his gratitude for being there with your sister and for just holding the family together a bit with the kids and the grandkids and all of that, because I, I feel like the family has grown since dad has passed. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah, um, because I feel family celebrations are, yeah, they're a mission. They're quite huge, <laughs> yeah. which is, which is fabulous. But I want you to know that he, he would have absolutely enjoyed that. He was such a family orientated man. He would love sitting around talking to everybody, some good food, um, you know, the jokes flowing, the conversation flowing. You'd understand that. He was absolutely in his elements in that environment. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's also given me the impression also, you've got a lot of other family members in the spirit world as well. Oh, yes. Because it's like he's 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 giving me the impression that he's meeting up with everybody. Um, you've got uncles and aunties. He's he's meeting up with every, like would be his brothers and sisters. He's meeting up with everybody. Um, so I want to leave you with his love and his Thank acknowledgement you. for what you're doing. Hmm. Because I feel like there's an acknowledgement that you are having to cope with things and you're doing rather well at it. Oh, thank you. Okay, Laura. Big love. Thank you. Okay. Shirley Ann, thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for volunteering your time and being with us today. We'll send Shirley Ann lots of love. Uh, a few announcements coming up. First of all, I know we all want to hear from our loved ones. We do and they they are with us. Trust me, they are and they work with us in sometimes such subtle ways. But I think you might find my two latest podcasts interesting on um, Shades of the Afterlife. I talked to a Joshua Lewis who invented the Hope Spirit Box app, which is on your phone. Well, you can download it for free on your phone interesting some people in the afterlife want to work through technology there's been some people that have had some good results with that also i talk with our tutors on we don't die radio uh carrie mcleod and phil dykes catching up with them there's lots of really good things going on including they give some tips about being our own medium how to continue that 
communication with our loved ones in, that are in the spirit world. They do walk by our sides. They, they do witness what's going on. They do hear us. And unfortunately, it's not as easy to hear them. Speaking of which, we've got some really neat things going on. Um, at first week in August, all of our new classes begin Mondays with Scott Milligan and myself. We spend a lot of time just quieting our mind and we have a gentle blend with that unseen world. It's called Trance in the Altered State. There are no breakout rooms in that. Uh, Tuesdays will be time with Carrie and Phil. If you're already a medium student, it's talking about and practicing how you demonstrate your mediumship in a group. And then on Wednesdays, if you're brand new, we welcome you to join our soul to soul communication. And whether you want to be a medium or not, friends, I tell you, when you are working with another person and all of a sudden things that you think you're imag are your imagination, other people can say, yeah, that's my loved one. You know, the spirit world, it's interesting how they work. Sometimes you love a stranger, you're feeling all these feelings, yet you've never met this person. And when you start putting these feelings and thoughts on loudspeaker, you realize that you are the the medium between the two worlds. So you start with soul to soul communications, which starts Wednesday, the first week in August. And then on Thursday, for those who are students um, of mediumship, it is the next level of mediumship. So that you have to look forward to first week in August. But for this week on Tuesday, you can join Scott Milligan for sitting in the power hours. It's a wonderful time to recharge your spiritual batteries and they're very peaceful and comforting. On Thursday, our friends Mitch and Kath Shirley, they're both advanced grief recovery specialists. They offer what's called a free grief cafe. It's an opportunity to share or to listen, but they always have some great tools for the grieving process. And I know there's one thing we have in common, many of us, is we've had someone pass and we are experiencing that grief and it's the most painful thing we deal with um, but that's thursday with kath and mitch friday our friend scott milligan will be away so we have a guest medium doing a demonstration those that remember chris jacobs i've interviewed him he's been on our sunday gathering he's a lovely british medium he's really really good he will be giving a full 90 minute medium demonstration i'll be there doing the behind the scenes things um, and then on sunday we've got a couple of guests on our Sunday gathering. Darren is back with me, but we also have Dominic Bogue, who will be our medium. He'll be back. And then we have a fellow named Chris Ryan, who is a dad whose son passed from fentanyl. Sorry to say, but he is part of helping parents heal and also helping fathers heal. If you're a dad, or even if you're not a dad, I think there's a different journey for dads. And he has compiled a book called Helping Fathers Heal, which has 25 stories of gentlemen whose children have passed and them make working through grief and also the connection with them on the other side. So he will be our guest speaker. That's next Sunday. Our tutors are traveling. Of course, you haven't seen Carrie and Phil for a while. They are traveling. Some of you are going to catch up with them next month. They'll be in Casadega, Florida. And then in October, you can see them at um, in New Jersey in the USA. And they'll also be back in between to be on our Sunday gathering when they have some time as well. You can meet Scott into this month. He'll be at the Arthur Finley College teaching. And then also you can join Darren, Scott, Dominic Bogue, Josephine, and others at uh, in Barlow in the Netherlands. That will be in November. So I could just have a little notes here. I think I got to everything. Where you find all of this is we don't die.com. It's all there, including registration for next week's Sunday gathering. You can click on the store page. Uh, you can click on, uh, so just click, just play around with the site. You'll find everything there. A uh, shout out to our friends who have donated to our Sunday gathering, making it possible to be with you today. We really thank you. We know it's not anything we ever want to ask, but we it does help. So if you can, great. If you can't, great. But if those of you who have donated, we appreciate it. We really do. It all helps. It gets expensive, all this online stuff. So just a few words for the week, and then I'll pass it over to Shirley Ann for our closing prayer. I have two favorite quotes. One is by Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did do. 
So throw off the bow lines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. So even though we may find ourselves and know who we are and those footprints led to us, we still have dreams. We still have things we wanna go for. Do it, go for it. And the last quote I have, this is by William Shedd and he wrote this in the 1800s. A ship in a harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. Pretty great quotes. Uh, yeah, your dreams are on the other side of your comfort zone. So make it a great week. Pay attention to you. Go after your dreams. And remember, you are never alone. You are never, ever, 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 ever. And I'm also feeling to let you know, if you need anything, I know we've had some questions that popped up in the chat box. Write me if you'd like to, sandrachamplain at gmail.com. That's how you can get in touch with me. Or I'm here for you. That's what I want to say. So I'll pass it over to Shirley Ann for our closing prayer. Thank you, Sandra, so much. And if we could all just come together in that silence, just spending a moment as we close the gathering for this week. Never saying goodbye to our loved ones in the spirit world. We know that they are here with us. We know that they are around us. Please enjoy their love. Please hold their hand as they would of yours when they were here in the physical with you. Always know that your loved ones around you, they are only a whisker away we can still talk to them, we can still feel them, we can still touch them within our memory. So as we leave the gathering this week, let's take a little bit of that healing, a little bit of that happiness, a little bit of that joy, and lots of the spirit will with us into the next week. And make next week as big and as bright and as shiny as we can. On that note, God bless, and God bless in sending love to the spirit world also. Thank you so much, Shirley Ann, and thank you to you, Darren, and thank you, friends that are joining us on this side of life, and thank you to our friends and loved ones that are joining us from the other side of life, that you're still very much part of our lives. So we've got a beautiful closing song with our New Zealand theme as well. So here we go. Boy, am I digging this music. Thanks again, Jane and Shirley. And thank you, friends. Go on over to wedontdie.com. Click on the store page. Register for next week while it's fresh on your mind. All right. We love you so much. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.